Hola, welcome to my channel, Clear Vision. My name is Simon, and all the videos here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. Most of the videos here, or all of the videos here, are designed to kind of uh, give some kind of framework or some understanding of certain issues that life may throw um, your way. So hopefully there's something there of use. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, insights, feedback, or any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. This week's video is about formal function. This is about recovery from heartbreak and discerning whether you miss the form or the function. Often when people come to me and they are struggling to move forwards after a heartbreak, and I don't mean within a couple of weeks, I mean however long the grieving process is taken and then the person is like, I am sick and tired of this. I cannot get this out of my head. I, they've moved on, they're, they're gone, they're doing their thing, but I cannot move from this. I'm still in love with them. It, it's hindering me in every way, shape or form possible. And I need, I need some help. I need some help working through this. The, one of the first questions I tend to ask or where I tend to start moving towards is the question of, do you miss the form or do you miss the function? And this is the beginning of untangling that plate of spaghetti of heartbreak. If you miss the form, then you miss the person. It's that simple. And you're in a grieving process and it's gonna take as long as it takes. And <clears throat> I don't wanna get into you know how to grieve, but grieving process is subjective. Yes, there are elements of it which are quite common throughout most grief. People who suffer with grief end up suffering, you know, going through some kind of anger stage, uh, maybe repeatedly, or it comes back around, or um, the begging stage, or the, if, what if I'd have done this, all of those kind of things, if you look at like the Kubler-Ross model, yes, there are stages of grief, um, but everybody's journey through grief is their own individual journey. So these are all kind of like things to help you understand what process you're going through. If you're missing the form, the function's gonna bring the same thing, except the, the function is a little bit more difficult. There's more self work to do in the function because the fun missing the function is indicating something else. So that person did something for you. That person filled some kind of void, filled some kind of gap for you. And it's not actually about the person. So first of all, they're an object in your life. That's quite a hard thing to hear and understand. That, oh, well, I didn't think they were an object. Well, it's a mix of object and subject, but essentially they're an object in your life because you need them in there for what they provide functionally, which may be, I don't want to be on my own. I'm terrified of being on my own. So any partner is a good partner. Not having a partner is a terrible place to be and it bring, brings me nothing but anxiety, dread, despair, and I can't handle it. So I'm really, really missing this person, but not for the form. I'm missing this person because I don't want to be on my own. That's then where you begin to go, right, okay, so rather than focusing on the person, now we need to focus on you. I mean, we need to focus on you all the time anyway, but now we need to focus on this aspect of you where you cannot be by yourself you cannot regulate yourself if you are on your own you need someone else to regulate you and that shows a level of codependency um, that also shows some kind of trauma in there which maybe you need to work on so this is why this question is really really important to ask yourself form or function you can begin to look at maybe your attachment styles and i don't mean go and take the test but kind of look at how your relationships were with your parents how your relationships have been with best friends, family members, how your relationships have been uh, or with uh, ex-partners. And when I say how your relationships have been, how have you been within those relationships? That's a good indicator. And also look at those partners, but mainly look at how you've been. Were you cold, dismissive, um, emotionally unavailable, inaccessible, too independent? Were you unsupportive? Um, is that how you are? Do you fear someone else's emotions? Do you fear someone else needing some support from you? Does that make you feel a certain way and make you kind of recoil away from the relationship? Or are you the person who's like needs that constant support, needs that constant uh, reassurance, etc., etc. What's going on? And you can't actually give that to yourself. And there's no judgment in this, but this is where you may find yourself after each Heart, uh, heartbreak after each loss of somebody, finding yourself um, 
unable to recover and it gets harder and harder each time and it takes longer and it takes longer and the suffering goes on for more and you can't break out of it and you keep them in your life and you try and stay friends or they don't want to be friends but the whole thing is just a complete mess and brings you to this kind of awful stagnant kind of non-moving place of I don't know self-torture self-loathing wherever you end up going with it so discerning form or function and then looking into your previous behaviors in relationships and how you were and the behaviors of those previous people in your relationships as i said were they dismissive were they unavailable were they very very reassuring were you in this kind of codependent relationship and so therefore no, that's what you're missing now there's a lot of things that can get tied up in loss in general and often with function it's it becomes even more kind of pronounced. You can miss the form of someone and you can miss, and then you can miss maybe the function that you had a future with that someone. So now you're grieving a future, which is grieving the function of the relationship, which is it gives you a direction and without being in a relationship, you don't have a future direction. And this can occur at any point. I mean, this occurs in various people and it can occur when parents no longer have children at home and sorts, all sorts of things like that. It can take on many guises, but we're looking at the loss of a, a romantic relationship. So at this point, you're now grieving this, wow, you know, I had a future, but oh, I knew what I was doing, I knew who I was. Now there's the function missing again because you weren't able to do it for yourself. You didn't have your own kind of agenda for yourself, for your life. It was tied up with them. But it wasn't about them, it was about having a partner. That was, and this is not to say this is wrong, this is not incorrect. Sometimes this naturally occurs, especially in, relation, especially in relationships. You join together. It's being able to recover from the union, breaking back down into two individuals who once came together and are now no longer together. But if you're constantly jumping into relationships because of the function of the relationship, because it makes you feel safe, because it makes you feel secure, because it makes you feel loved, because you then have some get up and go, you have the motivation, you strive towards a future because you have a purpose and your purpose is tied into that other person. If they leave, you're going to fall down and you're gonna fall down hard and you're gonna find it hard to get back up unless someone else takes the place of that person, in which case it was never about the person, it was never about the form, it was always about the function. Again, no judgment on this, but this is where you can then begin to go, ah, so I, it's kind of like, now nah, this is why I'm torturing myself now. I need to, in order to move past this heartbreak, partly what I need to do is learn to love myself. It's a bit of a cliche, but it's true. Build a future for myself, that's mine, which is adaptable, but it's still mine. And if somebody leaves me, it's still mine, I still have it, I just have to adapt it again. Learning to nurture yourself and finding other places for your love to go, which generally, most people, it needs to go to, towards back towards self, in part. So, that gives you an aspect to work on and then alleviates the intensity of how much grief you may have at the loss because now the loss is separated out into where it's not so much the person, it's I've also lost this and I've also lost that. And now these two things I can gain back for myself for some work, but I can't gain this back. So this is still gonna hurt for a bit, but this over here, this my future um, and my, my and loving and learning to love myself is going to uh, uh, um, you know eradicate several losses in one go. We can also do a few other things within this form function kind of uh, aspect of looking at the loss, which is we can begin to explore how we are viewing it. Are we, and this is when you can maybe do some journaling work and you can write down the pros and the cons of the relationship that you've lost to see if your perception of reality, and perception of reality is really, really important. It's never gonna be 100% congruent to reality, but if this is reality and this is your perception and they are far apart, you are going to torment yourself constantly. You need to get this kind of overlap where your perception of reality overlaps, mazel menos, uh, almost with um, that of which is actually objective, reality as objective as you can get without getting into deep kind of spiritual stuff. 
looking at the aspects of the relationship, are you focused solely on the positive aspects of the relationship, in which case you've romanticized the relationship, which you can then remove again and kind of go, I've romanticized the person and I love being in love, you know, and that again, that's function, that's not form. You can look at, so you can write a list of, you know, the pros and cons of the relationship, how you felt within that relationship, how you felt within certain negative aspects of the relationship. You may discover there were negative aspects of relationships and the relationship and for the past X amount of weeks or months that you've been grieving it, you hadn't even acknowledged those or you haven't even looked at the things that happened that went, that worked towards the breakup or the breakdown, if you like, of the relationship. Which bit did you not maintain? Which bit did they not maintain? Where were you not uh, meeting each other? Where were you not gelling? Where were you not integrating? Where were you not hearing each other? Is that you? Is that them? And again, if it's all about function, and if it's all about having a partner and doing that, it, this is going to be a very, very difficult exercise for you to do, but it's gonna be extremely empowering and life-changing exercises that you can do to then move into eventually, hopefully, if you want, another relationship which is more healthy and based on form as opposed to being based on function. To be in a relationship with someone because of that someone, because of who they are as a person, how they can make you feel, how you make them feel, is, and I, I don't mean, you know, like they make you happy. Yes, it's good to let someone make you happy. I don't mean that you need them for your happiness. This is a difference. You don't need, if you don't need someone for your happiness, if you don't need someone to get up in the morning, if you don't need someone to build yourself a future, but you have someone and that adds to it, brings something more to it, encourages you more, helps you in the difficult times, then that's about form. That's not about function. Although it sounds it when I said it, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> they're adding to it. So again, most relationships, most healthy relationships are probably a kind of a healthy mix of form and a little bit of function. When it tips into it's all about function and that leaves, then that becomes quite, that can be even more devastating. But my point is you can remove a lot of that devastation by realizing how much of it is actually function and not form. When it's form, there's not much you can do about it other than go through the process of grieving it. And what's the word, how, how would I phrase it? Wishing them all the best. If you still love them, letting them go, letting them go into the world. You know, it didn't work, you still love them. It's not about function, it's about them, it's about you as a person, let them go. If it's about function, you can work on it and you can limit the impact that it has and you, then you can, increase your chances of having a healthier relationship with somebody in the future. I hope that helps. Um, it was quite a brief one this week. Um, if you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments. Please feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves. Adios.